Building a good combat system in Roblox is more than just animations and player states. If you've watched my state manager and animation handler videos, then you already know that those are key, but there's a whole bunch more you actually have to get right. Stuff like properly handling hitboxes and hit detection so attacks feel fair and consistent, managing inputs so players can't spam moves or break the system, and syncing knockback or stuns so everything reacts smoothly and makes sense. In this video, I'll walk through the big challenges behind combat systems, why they are tricky, and how having all these pieces work together cleanly saves you a ton of headaches down the line. If you want your combat to feel polished and responsive, this is the video to watch before you write any combat code. So let's dig a bit deeper into why building combat systems is so tricky and why a lot of people get stuck or frustrated. The core issue is that combat systems involve a lot of moving parts all happening at the same time. Animations, hit detection, player input, effects, states, and if they aren't all perfectly in sync, the whole thing can fuel off, feel delayed, or just break entirely. One big problem is animation conflicts. Imagine your player is swinging a sword, but halfway through, another animation tries to play, maybe a stun or a block, and without a proper system, these animations can overlap or cancel each other in weird ways, and you end up with broken visuals and animations merging, which just ruins immersion. Another classic headache is hitbox management. Hitboxes are invisible zones that determine if an attack lands, but if your code isn't careful, those hitboxes can stay active too long or trigger multiple hits for a single attack. That leads to players getting unfair damage or attacks that feel random, mm. which is a huge turn off for players. And then there's input handling. Without controls like cooldown or input gating, players can mash attack buttons endlessly, causing attacks to overlap, skip important states, and just break the flow of combat completely. And if you add to that the challenge of state conflicts, like when a player is stunned but the code still lets them attack or move, without a centralized way to manage what the player is doing, you get those weird bugs where everything fights for control and everything ends up breaking. And finally, syncing effects like knockbacks and stuns with the rest of the system is tricky. If a player gets knocked back but the attack still hits, or the animation doesn't match the state, it feels buggy and unpolished. All of these problems come from trying to do everything separately without a clean system that manages how each part interacts. And that's why a lot of tutorials focus on just one piece, like animations, hit detections, or input handling, but they don't show how to make everything work together smoothly. Before we get into solutions, let's quickly run through the parts of a combat system that you absolutely need to get right if you want it to work smoothly. The first and usually the most important part is hitboxes and hit detection. You need a re reliable hit detection system so players feel like their attacks actually connect whether you're using raycasts, region 3, dot touched or any other way. If hits feel random players will lose trust and it will ruin the whole combat system. The next part is hitbox cancelling and priority. What would happen if two players attack at the same time or when someone gets hit mid attack? You need clear rules about when hitboxes are active, cancelled, where your system will behave weirdly. Then there's knockbacks and hit reactions. If your game uses knockbacks or stuns, those have to sync with the states and animations. You don't want a player to get knocked back, but still have their attack hit someone, and this would sync with the hitbox cancelling. Then there's input handling and cooldowns. Making sure that the players can't spam moves or queue inputs infinitely is crucial. Cooldowns, input gating, or buffering systems prevent spam and keep combat feeling fair. Stun locks and recovery. You have to avoid situations where a player gets stuck in an endless stun, giving players a way to recover or parry, keeps combat engaging and balanced. This is more based on the game you're trying to go for, but you always have to have some way to keep a person from being infinitely stunned. And if all these pieces connect properly, and you build a system that merges all these together perfectly, you will have a combat system that feels smooth and responsive. If you don't, the system will fall apart very fast. This is exactly why managers like a state manager and animation handler matter so much. Your state manager tracks exactly what the player is doing at every moment, whether they are attacking, they are stunned, blocking, idle. It makes sure those states don't conflict and handles transitions cleanly. And then there's the animation handler, which keeps all your animations organized and synced so you don't get any glitches, animations merging, repeated loading, or any issues like that. It lets you stop, play, swap animations easily without any weird overlaps. And together, these two managers help prevent bugs before they even happen. And instead of having a lot of scattered code and if statements everywhere, you can just have one clean system controlling behavior and visuals behind the scenes so you don't have to worry about debugging something that you shouldn't even have to do. When you build your system in modular parts like this, everything just gets easier. You're not smashing all of your code into one giant script. You have clean, reusable modules. You have one for handling inputs, you have one for managing states, one for running animations, and then others for handling hitboxes, cooldowns, knockbacks, this approach makes it easier to add new features like blocking, charge attacks, combo systems, 
without rewriting everything. It's clean, modular, and it scales a lot better. And it also saves you from endless bugs. Now, before you get mad at me for just rambling on about all of these pieces, do not worry. I have a full hands-on combat system tutorial coming up that will cover everything I mentioned here, step by step. In that video, I will dive into setting a player input, handling hitboxes and cooldowns, syncing states with animations, and making the whole system feel smooth and responsive. And of course, scalable. If you haven't already, check out my state manager and animation handler videos. I have them linked below so you are prepped and ready to follow along. And trust me, once you get all of these parts together, your combat system will feel a whole lot smoother and way less frustrating to build and debug. If this video helped you understand the bigger picture, hit like and subscribe so you don't miss the full tutorial coming soon. And if you want to try out the modules I talked about, check the link in the description for the downloads. And yes, I know the link for Ty's links gets some questions. They help support the channel so I can keep making content like this, but the downloads are still totally free. I appreciate it if you use them.